Oil goes for his highest. You know, it amazes me sometimes when I read on the internet or I see some, boy, you name it, it doesn't matter what denomination they come from or what classification they give themselves, whether prophet, evangelist, televangelist, pastor, deacon, preacher, reacher, Indian chief, I don't know. But have you ever noticed that sometimes people really get off on knocking down the church that Jesus died for? Have you ever noticed that sometimes it's real convenient to, you know, grab someone's ministry by the throat and wrangle it and see what's wrong with it and shake it upside down and throw it down on the ground and stomp on it? That Jesus said he was standing in heaven in the midst of the candlesticks with and that he had a message for them from himself? Have you ever noticed how people will jump on the bandwagon and run to the crowds that want to crucify somebody who's fallen in a ministry and they want to crucify him, kill him, give us Barabbas, Barabbas. We'd rather have this other guy than that man because we know he's a sinner. He was one of us. Now he's just one of those. And Jesus died on the cross. You ever notice these things? Are you one of them? You see, my gospel is a gospel of Jesus who came to bring reconciliation, not condemnation to man. He wanted to take your hand and put it in God's hand and let God say he would never let go. Somewhere in between all that, we've gotten into this idea that we're going to take our fist and we're going to punch out another person's ministry or person in the ministry and we're going to ignore the fact that God, God, not you, and not the prophets, and not the teachers, and not the evangelists, and not the preachers, and not all those who say they have the gift of discernment, but God is the one who stands in heaven and sees and causes the circumstances of their life to bring them to a place of judgment now, lest they be judged later. But if you do, guess what happens to you? You become an accuser of the brethren. That man might be saved because you can't see the heart. So be careful in what you do and say and what crowds you join to slam and jam and bam and crush and smash and do whatever it is that you think God wants you to do. Because you're setting an example for other people. And when you do that, to me, it just looks like a bunch of dogs barking and yapping and wanting to tear each other apart, a lot like wolves do. And you know, if you're a sheep, that's not where you're supposed to be. It's not where I am, and it's not what I abide in doing, because I want to point anyone and everyone to Jesus and let him direct them, not man direct us. Don't calculate without God. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37, 5. Don't calculate without God. God seems to have a delightful way of upsetting the things we have calculated on without taking him into, into account. We get into circumstances which were not chosen by God, and suddenly we find we've been calculating, thinking, and doing without God. He was not entered in as a living factor. Do you consider God part of your equation? Or do you consider him distant and he's not involved in what you're doing or what's being done or who should be doing it? The one thing that keeps us from the possibility of worrying is bringing God in as the greatest factor in all of our calculations. Isn't that the point of it all in the first place? You aren't supposed to do anything. You aren't supposed to be there. Sure, you can agonize in prayer over it. Sure, you can agonize and talk to God about it. Sure, you can do all these things with God telling you to do something. But if God hasn't told you, and you tell me right now that God told you, and I'll say, good. Whatsoever the Lord has told you to do, that you should do. But don't tell me you read in the Bible and that you're called to do something. You tell me that God spoke to you direct, and then I'll believe it. 
because otherwise all this condemnation and consternation and confusion and abusiveness that isn't my Jesus I'm sorry sure God will judge them sure the Lord himself will separate sheep from goats but you know a goat goes after each other and they butt heads maybe you better learn from that one because sheep don't in our religion it is customary to put God first but we are apt to think that it is impertinence to put him first in the practical issues of our life we only do it on Sunday and we only think that it's in spiritual matters if we imagine we have to put on our Sunday moods before we come near to God we may never come near to him at all we must come as we are with our attitudes and actions and with our wrong motivations don't calculate with the evil in view does God really mean us to take no account of the evil love taketh no account of the evil period <laughs> okay I guess that's the scripture oops love is not ignorant of the existence of the evil but it does not take it in as a calculating factor apart from God we do reckon with evil we calculate it with it in view and work all our reasonings from that point standpoint without God you can do nothing and God can do everything so it's not with you that he has to operate but you have to allow him to be God so he can do it don't calculate with the rainy day in view you cannot lay up for a rainy day if you're trusting Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ said let not your heart be troubled God will not let you keep your heart from being troubled it is a command let not you do it haul yourself up 101 times a day in order to do it until you get in the habit of putting God first and calculating with him in view because you see and the reality of it all is that just simply the idea that he's God, you're not, he's in control, he's got it, he knows, he said it, he's doing it, he's allowing it to happen, and you're in the way. So once you know that he's in control, then calculate it with him in control. Tell yourself every single time you run into one of these conflicts and consternations and conflicts and trials and tribulations and anything else that comes your way, God is in control. God's doing it. God is doing it. God, 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 God. Because if you don't put God in it, you're out of it. Bottom line. Doesn't matter what gift you got. Doesn't matter who you think you are. If you don't put God in it, God doesn't do it. But when God is in control, and you allow Him to reveal how He is in control, you'll find something else very interesting. He doesn't want you to do anything at all, but stand and see the salvation I bring, saith the Lord. That's all the Lord wants to do, is to reveal He is God, you are not. And when you do, man, it's a kickback. You know, it really is. You can be almost like a Christian couch potato when you are able to keep turning it over to God and finding out what He would have you to do. Which nine times out of ten is keep your hands and your mouth out of it. Pretty simple. Unless he says to do what he said in the first place, which was to share salvation, to teach, not preach, and to educate, to bringing up the saints so that they can become like Jesus, not be Jesus, <laughs> in the sense of condemnation, because Jesus came to save the world, and that is our direction, and that is our attitude, and that is our action, to save the world from itself, so that some souls might be saved. Because the world is passing away in the lust thereof, and man is perishing. And he needs us to be what we said we are, the light of the world, not the righteousness.